heading to the Apple Store today to get my hands on the new iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. I'm not buying them, I'm just going to try and get some hands-on video. Waiting for the 35 that'll take me to the Inner Harbor and then I'm going to transfer over to the 8, which will take me up to Towson. One interesting thing is that just before I got here, I was in Ericsson and one person at the front desk had actually just received an iPhone 6 for just the smaller size screen of the iPhone. That thing is already insanely big compared to the regular iPhone. Excited to see how this day goes and where it goes from here. After taking a bus for one and a half hours through Baltimore City and up towards Towson, I finally made it to the mall where the Apple Store was supposed to be. At this point, it was just a matter of finding where a huge crowd of people had decided to form a line, and I would know exactly where to go. I felt really bad for the Microsoft stand that was in the mall. After plenty of walking around, I finally found Apple. Even though I wasn't waiting in line to purchase one myself, I still got to go inside and get hands-on experience for myself. The iPhone I have in this shot is the iPhone 6. Since I needed one hand to hold the camera, I did get to experience how easy or difficult one hand use would be. It's a very sleek profile of curved edges that make it feel wonderful in the hand. On the side, you have the volume rocker and silent ringer switch more if flush with the iPhone itself, and the sleep-wake button has moved on the side to be more reachable. For me, the screen felt to be a good size, but for those hard to reach areas, Apple's method of double tapping Touch ID to lower the entire screen really did help. It may be a bit unorthodox, but it seemed to work well in practice, and I'm sure people who wouldn't want to strain their fingers will greatly, greatly appreciate it. The camera on both sides has been improved and it really does show. The front facing camera especially has sharpened up. Although as good as the quality looks now, and as good as I may look, I really can't think of a time when I would ever need a burst selfie mode as Apple does offer in this case. Taking 10 selfies within a matter of one second just really doesn't seem like my kind of thing. But this was no small step in terms of Apple's hardware. It's solid, refined, and seems much more polished than those leaked photographs implied. This is the iPhone 6 Plus. This is essentially the behemoth that everybody has been talking about for a while. The landscape mode, from what I could see, was definitely quite good, but if anybody even thinks about putting a full-size keyboard on this phone, I will go crazy. So this is kind of like the junior cousin to the iPad, where you can pretty much turn it any way you want. And let me get this out of the way right now, that I can barely hold the phone myself with my gigantic hands. Yeah, that was a problem for me early on. I don't even want to think about what this phone would be like if it had an OtterBox case. For whatever reason, that double tap feature that Apple was advertising in the 6 wasn't working on this one. I don't know why. If you don't watch movies on this phone, you're insane. This is definitely one behemoth of a phone, but I can understand why there's a market for it. It's definitely got some good features along with its improved camera, and the fact that it has a larger screen, for people who want more screen real estate but still want a mobile phone, this is definitely something that they would go for. It's also why you have that extra $100 price point. Now like I was saying earlier, the camera on both the 6 and the 6 Plus have been greatly improved. You have better optics, you have optical stabilization in the 6 Plus, and you have digital stabilization in the 6. And of course, that nice little feature of 240 frames per second in slow motion. The following was not color corrected or edited in post at any way. The iPhone 6 is definitely a very good filming device. It definitely had great color, it had good dynamic range. The one issue I saw with it is that it had a little bit of trouble focusing, but I'm not sure why. 
The iPhone 6 you would expect to have much better quality in terms of color and dynamic range. It's kind of the same as the iPhone 6. The big difference though is that the fact that this iPhone 6 Plus could focus much better than the iPhone 6 and was much better at tracking that focus even while moving the phone itself. After I had my hands on time, I decided to do a little video afterwards saying my first initial thoughts. So my first impression of the iPhone 6 is definitely very good. It's definitely a solid upgrade if you're coming from a 5 or a 5S and definitely if you're coming from a 5C. The iPhone 6 Plus, my impressions were good, mainly because it is a huge, huge phone. I definitely didn't pick up on any kind of speed boost from the fact that it was 64-bit, a new A8 processor. Typically, the pretty mundane things you do, like email, text messages, photos, video. As far as the processor goes, like, the processor in my iPhone 5 doesn't seem to really slow anything down at all. On the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, I can definitely tell how it will help with video and photos, especially for 200 frames per second on video, which really is insane. Now, if I was to say personally which one I would go for, I would probably end up going for the iPhone 6, mainly because that screen of 4.7 inches is definitely better, being that it's bigger. But 5.5 inches is just way too big to carry around as a phone. I mean, some people like the phablet style of phones, but I don't think it's for me. If you had been following the news for the last 24 hours, everyone has been saying that this iPhone launch was different from many of the previous launches. I realized as I got back to Baltimore to create this video that the reason is that this was the first time Apple took a chance with a product that in their mind was perfect for everyone. Creating two almost completely different variants of their one phone was a big risk, but it turned out to be one of the best decisions Apple has made in recent years. The days are over where one size of product fits all consumers. In order to truly compete with viable competitors, you need to give your products more choice than color or storage sizes. This will not only benefit Apple, but benefit consumers who are looking not only for what they want of a company, but what they want of a phone. The future looks bright no matter which phone you possibly look to get. And believe me, I hope to be part of that future very, very soon.